All right guys, so in my last video, I showed you guys how I had to install these hood pins because of my uh, aftermarket lightweight hood. Uh, it was too light and flew off while I was driving it. And uh, I didn't really plan on making that video, just like I didn't plan on making this one to today. So let me show you guys what's going on. So I get in the car, try to uh, take off and uh, go for a drive. And I noticed that my clutch was uh, all the way down to the floor. So I pop the hood and I come over here to the slave cylinder to see if I uh, got any leaks going on. And uh, I'm inspecting it, right? I don't see anything. There's nothing on the floor where uh, I parked it. It's moved now, but <clears throat> it doesn't seem to be leaking from anywhere. So then I move over here to the master cylinder and uh, everything appears to be pretty much dry. So then I open up the reservoir and I notice that it's empty. Uh, I managed to fill it up, right? I filled it up with some dot three brake fluid and I go back and I start to pump the clutch and it rises back up again. But as I took a closer look, I noticed that it appears to be leaking pretty bad from the, um, the master clutch cylinder. Look at that. Just look at the difference in color. So over here on this side, it looks kind of dry, but down here, all that right there, that appears to be leaking straight through. You can see also that the, uh, carpet appears to be a different shade you can tell i haven't cleaned the car in a while and the left side is just dark and then the right side is just dirty so uh, all the dot three brake fluid seems to have just been uh, dropped down onto the carpet here so now i have to take out my master cylinder and replace it and uh, bleed it to get any air out of the system because i'm also going to be replacing the slave cylinder just because you know it wasn't that much of an expensive part and i figure while I'm doing it, I might as well get this, this one done as well. All right guys, so after three separate attempts at the store, three separate receipts, and then finally I get this one, the one I need. The other ones, they were totally different. Now, after about an hour of killing time there, I can finally get started on this job. So let's get to it. So the first part in this um, process is you gotta, you gotta mess up your back because there's just no way in getting in under there in a comfortable position because this is just terrible. This. The seat is as far back as it goes. I'm kind of tall and we're just gonna have to make do with this. But we gotta remove the, uh, yeah, disconnect the clutch pedal to the master cylinder. All right, guys, there's a before right here. You can tell it's disgusting down here. So this is our clutch pedal and we have to remove that pin right there. Right there. It's got a cotter pin and we just push it out. Okay, so I managed to remove the pin. I actually just cut it because I have extra extra ones here. So now we just gotta take this out and push it through. There we go. And there it is. Now the master cylinder is detached. Now you wanna make a note of the direction it was in. See these, uh, these prongs were facing the door Whereas the flat side is the one you want facing the passenger door, I guess. So once the uh, pin is removed, we're going to have to take off these uh, nuts right here. Shoot. One here and one right behind this, um, right behind this bracket over here. It's a uh, 12 millimeters. So the next step is actually to loosen up this uh, hard line right there. Unfortunately though, I do not have a flare nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and try not to strip it. So here we go. Oh, come on. Okay, so I just sprayed it down with some, uh, some spray to get it loose. Unfortunately though, I think it's probably a uh, bad idea to loosen up this thing from the inside before you loosen this. So I would recommend you loosen up the hard line first and then remove the master cylinder because now it's all just kind of loose. It's kind of difficult. Oh, got it. Success. So unfortunately without the flare nut, I'm going to have to do this at a quarter turn at a time because I can't actually get a good, uh, there's not re really enough space for the 
for the wrench here so this is gonna take a while so now we're just gonna take out these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the reservoir in place maybe we'll be able to access that hard line a little easier all right guys so I managed to get the hard line loose um, where is it at right here and I started pulling this thing out now so it should come out pretty easy let's see here come on here we go so there it is this is our old one and just look at that that's yeah that's disgusting so you're gonna want to be careful when you remove this thing because you might get some drips on the uh, on your paint and it's very corrosive on paint so we really don't want to leave it on there for too long I'm not too sure how to neutralize it though so I'm gonna go ahead and just spray some water on that just in case so this is our old one and uh, it the reservoir still actually has some fluid in it so I'm gonna go ahead and just place it in this box while I clean it up a little bit so we just want to get all the uh, carbon buildup that's uh, stored in these lines. You could probably tell as soon as I open it up in here, it's going to be black. Oh, um, I guess not. I guess it just spilled or something. But yeah, look, you can see all that gunk buildup in there. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the line and we can go ahead and toss this bit. But we got to make sure to keep the uh, little rubber gasket here. I don't want to rip it, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area so it can slide out rather smoothly. All right, so there we are. We removed the uh, reservoir and the line and the gasket and separated it from the master cylinder. Also, you want to avoid contact with skin and clothing. A um, little late for that now, but <laughs> I guess better late than never. So we're going to go ahead and toss this and go ahead and start cleaning that. All right, so here we are. We've cleaned the master cylinder reservoir. And it looks pretty shiny now. Just look at all that gunk that was in there. It's uh, pretty disgusting now. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start taking out the slave cylinder now. So we're going to do the same thing here. Just loosen up this hard line here. Look at that. No flare nut needed. But it really would come in handy because this is going to take forever again. Damn it. Okay, one thing I learned from removing the master cylinder is we're going to want to put like a towel down here. This is just an old dirty rag. Uh, because I don't want to have to clean up the mess once the uh, brake fluid starts clean the uh, clutch fluid starts draining down so we're gonna keep going at this turn by turn because I don't have a flare nut loose we can go ahead and start taking out these two bolts down here so for this one we needed a bigger wrench so we're gonna give it another try oh, no, come on. don't strip on me so essentially these were way too tight for my previous ratchet I had to get a smaller size socket with a bigger wrench to get more leverage so that's one bolt out and as you can see the little hard line came loose as well as the uh, little boot cover now is uh, fully extended but this one is still kind of giving me some hard time so come on there we go and there it went damn it all right guys so now that we got them both out this is the uh, stock side up here and these are the new ones so as you can see the length is pretty similar if we need to adjust it in there we could just rotate this nut here and adjust the length accordingly but I don't think we're going to need to adjust it all that much. And as for this one, it's just plug and play, really. We're just going to take off these, these gaskets here. Also change my gloves since we're dealing with new parts now. So keep everything clean, you know. Also, we're going to take this little rubber grommet here that covers the bleeder, the bleeder line and just replace it onto this one. It's just to protect it from, you know, getting any dust inside there because it's, uh, as you can see, it's an open open tube in there and we, don't, we just don't want to get anything in there. So now we're going to go ahead and install this back in there basically the same way that we put it on. But first I'm going to have to uh, install this bit as well as the little gasket that goes on this side. So here we go. Oh no, don't slide back out. 
just gonna go ahead and see if we can slide this thing in there. Oh boy. There we go. Hopefully I didn't strip it. I didn't have any troubles with it until now. But I think that's how it was when it uh, before I took it out. So it's pretty tight there now. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up from the inside now. Guys, okay, so I managed to clean it up just a little bit. Just cleaned up any extra, you know, um, brake fluid that was in there. We have to make sure that these prongs are on the outside and this flat side is on the inside of the car, closer to the passenger side. Now I haven't actually tightened it yet because I'm not quite sure if this is the right way to do it. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now. So once I install the pin and the cotter pin, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these 12 millimeter bolts and then we can go ahead and move on to the slave cylinder. There we go. All that's left is just to tighten this one that adjusts the length. I think we got it right on. Oh, I should do it. I don't know why it's loose though. I'll try crimping it. Let's see. So let me go there. That's just so we can try to bend it and this hopefully it stays like that. So here we go. I mean, not much different really, but okay. I think we're done down here. Let's go move on to the slave cylinder. So for the slave cylinder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this little area here. Look at that. Make sure that it just touches only this and no dirt. I don't have a boot for this. I know some of them come with like a little cover. Wish I did, but man, look at that. That's just disgusting. Also, this will probably help us with any uh, squeaks. I know this car definitely has a squeaky clutch. So hopefully we can get rid of that by cleaning this up and some NECs on this little nipple looking thing. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put just a little bit of anti-seize and then we're gonna just pop it in there. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna have to put the camera down because I'm gonna have to bolt it in place first before I can get the line to go in all the way. At least just one bolt to hold it steady. This one is the most complicated one to get done so far. Cause look, it just tends to wanna, I'm just guessing here. I honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Look at this, I'm tired. My hands cramping up. All right, so now that the slave cylinder has been tightened, we can go ahead and tighten up this line here. All right, so now we can go ahead and install these 10 millimeter bolts on the reservoir and we are almost done installing brand new master and slave clutch cylinders. Okay, now it's time to bleed the line. And I don't know how to do that. So I will be right back after I do some research. So after some research, I found that it's probably easier to do this with two people, but since it's just me right now, uh, I'm gonna need to use the old uh, bottle and hose method. So these lines are for the, um, you know, your windshield wiper uh, fluid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this into the Coke bottle from McDonald's. And I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of a dot three brake foot on the, on the bottom so we can prevent any air from going back into the system once we start the bleeding process. All we need now is um, the right size for this thing. Let's see if you guys can see, it's 1132s. Yeah, so we're gonna want to loosen this and we're gonna go step on the clutch. But first we have to top off the brake fluid. Loosen the line up and then we're gonna go step on the clutch. Clutch, down. Ooh, that thing went down way too fast. All right, once we step the clutch, we can come over here, tighten it up nice and tight and then go back inside and release the clutch. We're just gonna bring it back up. There we go. And now we can repeat it again. Loose, press, tighten, and release. Yeah, two people would definitely be ideal. 
one is tiring. So I have ran through this process where I have finished two of the reservoir tanks full of clutch fluid. I'm adding my third one right now. I'm going to also check the bottle to see where we at. Honestly, it's not bad. Overall, pretty good. I guess our system wasn't all that dirty. But let's continue the process right now because it's still not quite tight. Remember the first time I went down super, super easy? Let's see. Yep, this one's got a little more give to it. All right, so I'm not really sure when you're supposed to stop doing this process really, but the last step that I did, the clutch finally came back and sprang out. So I did it one more time and this is where we are now. I think we might be good. This thing has some pretty decent kickback. So admittedly, this took a lot longer than I had hoped for, mainly because I had to go back to AutoZone a couple times. But now we've got decent amount of kickback. It still squeaks a little. You guys hear that? So I have bled the system with three full reservoir tanks. I've noticed there's no leaks. I don't see any leaks on there. The line doesn't seem to be leaking at all. It's not wet. Also, the same thing with here. Look at that. Dry as a bone, which is what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just top this off with some more brake fluid, close it off and call it a day. So that pretty much covers today's episode. Another one that, you know, I didn't really want to do, but the best part that I like about it is that it's very easy to fix. I mean, this thing took me maybe two and a half hours and um, an hour of that because I had to go back and forth to AutoZone. Still, not that complicated, a little tedious working under the car. Oh yeah, I still have to clean. Look at all that. Worst part about it, but hey, it comes with uh, having to fix this kind of stuff. So now that we're finished, one thing I learned is working under, this, under the dashboard freaking sucks. It's like a game of Twister by yourself. It's annoying and painful. Two, um, this, this particular job really wasn't all that complicated. What I would recommend is you do want to um, maybe place a catch can at the bottom to catch any of the uh, brake fluid that spills out because it's quite messy and now I have to clean it up. And another thing, I guess, when you bleed it, um, it really helps to have two people running back and forth. It's just annoying. This is going to be it for this video, guys. Yeah, all I did was replace the master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder. And now I am right back where I started. So hopefully this helped you guys. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Good speed and take care. Peace.